What did you do last summer? Well, if you don't know, I don't know actually what you did last summer, but there was a movie in the 90s that was entitled, What Did You Do Last Summer? It was a horror film. Have they ever seen this movie? Okay, it's not that good. <laughs> but I bring this up because what I did last summer applies a little bit to our chapel for today because what happened were these three teenagers go off on a vacation, all right, um, to uh, a vacation spot by the ocean. And as they go over there, um, they're vacationing, and it's their senior year, they're partying up, and on their way back, all right, to go down to their normal everyday lives, they're driving along this deserted road. And it's nighttime, it's eerie, and one of them is distracted, and as they're distracted, they hear, Poof! they hit something. Unaware of what they did, they are panicking, saying, what was that? They get out, and they realize they hit a man that was along the road. Well, obviously, they didn't want to do this. They're, they're freaking out, going, oh, man, um, what, what are we going to do? We just hit this individual. Um, well, should we call the, the police? Well, they start thinking, well, if we call the police, we're just going off, this, this means we could go to jail. This means that we could do, something bad could happen. We, we could lose our scholarships. We wouldn't be able to start our careers, go to college. So one of them comes up with the idea, this brilliant idea, saying, well, nobody's seen us. Nobody's around here. So we're going to take this body, because they realize the person's not breathing, and they're going to take it and they're going to toss it into the ocean. And nobody's going to know about it. It will be our secret. It will be our secret. We'll take it to our graves. It'll be okay. They'll maybe wash up, but it'll be okay. Nobody will know. And so time passes. Another summer comes. And all of a sudden, one of the girls receives an ominous note in red ink. And it says, I know what you did last summer. And then you can think about what happens. All this guilt, all the shame, all these things start clouding in her head, and yes, it's a horror movie, so a lot of other bad things start happening. And these, I guess, the four people that you see on the screen, um, they're seen as heroes, but I don't know if they're necessarily heroes for doing what they did, but bad things happened. That was their secret. Secrets. The secret I described was a secret that was a sinful secret. Pastor Heemner a few weeks back, put up and had this secret saying, hey, I know what you did this summer, and on Snapchat, I'm going to display everything that you did. And there were people that were going, oh, all right, this is great. <laughs> there were other people that were sitting there going, I don't want them to see what I did last summer. We all have secrets. In our sinful nature, we have secrets that lead us to have guilt, shame, I have secrets, you have secrets, and right now I bet you're thinking of all the different things that you have done last summer, two summers ago, for teachers, maybe when you did in your childhood, things that you did even maybe yesterday. But we all have secrets. And for our theme today, the reality is, is that there are no secrets from God. In Jeremiah... He says, who can hide in secret places so I cannot see them? Rhetorical question. No one. God is everywhere. God knows everything. Even though we try to fool ourselves and think that we can like, hold off and all those simple things that we do as a sinner, okay, I'm doing this, nobody will know, nobody will know. All right? God knows. I asked this question to my son the other day as I was preparing this chapel. We were driving back from his country practice, and I said, Ethan, if you knew everything that you've done bad, okay, and I knew it, okay, all the secret stuff that I know you tried to get away with, how would you feel? And he said to me, scared. I said, why? He didn't answer. 
how would you how do you feel as a sinful person knowing that you have an almighty god a perfect god that knows every single thing that you have done bad in your life it's kind of like adam and eve adam and eve were in the garden the garden of eden god created this wonderful beautiful world perfect. And God comes up to Adam and Eve and says, populate this. This is for you. I love you so much. I'm giving you everything. I'm asking you one thing. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because if you eat of that tree, you will surely die. You'll surely die. And Adam and Eve, yeah, we can do that, God. And they were tempted by a serpent, saying, hey, did God really say that? You can eat the tree. It's good. Come on, eat it. And they ate it. And if you know that story, all of a sudden, what happened was they started feeling guilty. They saw and looked at each other and said, oh my goodness, what did we just do? Eve, you're naked. Adam, <laughs> you're naked. And they, they it felt horrible because they realized, oh my goodness, I, I, I'm, I, this is something bad. And they felt ashamed and they said, we've got to cover ourselves. So they go and get fig leaves and they, they sew them together and they cover themselves. And then they hear something. They hear God coming down. It's like a, a child doing something really bad which is like my son, and all of a sudden you hear that like, patter of little feet running around. They're going, with, oh, that's something not good. But they hide from God. Isn't that what we do? If you ask yourself this question, how would that make you feel if, every, if God knew everything about you? As a sinner, I would be terrified. Absolutely terrified. And if you think about it, as sinners that we are, we sometimes forget that we have something great. Because, yes, as sinners, we know that our sin leads us to feel despair, leads us to feel depression, anxiety. We try to hide it from our friends, our family, all the different sins, and we try to put on this happy face that everything's perfect. We put it on Facebook, we put it on Snapchat, we do all this stuff, we say, oh, we're perfect, we're perfect. But deep down, we know the secret is that we're horrible people. But yet we keep on having these secrets and these lies, and we forget that, yes, God knows everything. He's not hiding anything. And if I would stop there, my friends... This would be a very, very bad chapel. However, I come to you with hope. This hope, this grace, this love that we've been talking about all this month and that uh, Mr. Sable talked about yesterday. That love is from our God, who, yes, knows everything. But as Christians, we know this. God demonstrated his own love for us while we were still sinners, that Christ would die for every single one of you. When Adam and Eve sinned in that garden, God came down and presented to them. He said, Adam and Eve, why were you hiding? He said, well, we realized we were naked and we didn't mean for you. Well, who told you we were naked? Well, uh, you ate of that tree, didn't you? <laughs> well, there's going to be consequences. You're going to die. You're going to have a hardships. You're going to have despair. You have all these bad things that are going to happen in your life. However, I'm going to give you hope. I'm sending a Savior, a Messiah, that's going to come and die for every single one of your sins so you could be free. So that the vision between us, we can now be united once again. Our God loves us so much and cares about every single one of you so much that he sent his Son to die for us so that Therefore, there is no condemnation. There is no death. We do not have to feel that guilt of our sin. Those secrets that you keep, that you feel like you can't tell anybody because you know that if they knew the things that you've done, they would maybe put you down, make you look bad, you can go to a God that knows everything and go to him in prayer and say, God, please forgive me. Please help me. Give me strength. Give me healing. Help me make it through this. And you know what? He does. 
Our God that knows everything, for a Christian, this is the most wonderful thing in the whole entire world. We know, ha- we know we have a friend in Jesus. We know we have a friend in our God that will give us hope, that will give us strength, that will... It's not a God that just sits there on an ivory tower saying, okay, you're all by yourself. Thinking that, okay, I can hide these sins, you won't know it. No, God knows and he cares about you and he keeps on bringing you back saying, hey, wake up! Wake up. I know you've sinned. But I forgive you. I forgive you. Trust me. I love you. I sent my son, Jesus Christ, who stood on that cross and knew that everybody, all of his friends, would desert him. He knew this, yet he still hung there and said, God, please forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And then he rose again, came to his disciples while they were cowering and hiding, afraid of the secret that they were disciples and saying, don't worry, I am with you. Go out and preach this gospel so other people can have it. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were filled with the love that emanated in their hearts and they wanted to tell others, saying, hey, your sin is forgiven by Jesus Christ. That guilt that you have is gone. We have heaven and eternal life. What a grand and glorious message as Christians. That message we can share with others. That's a secret that we shouldn't keep. So in knowing that our God knows what we've done every summer, this isn't a horror film. It's not a horror film where it fills us with anxiety and guilt. No, no, this is joy. This is joy of knowing we have a God that cares for us, a God that loves us, a God that keeps on calling out to us to make us his own. Find comfort in that, my friends. Find strength and share that message with others.